I think that it is the birthright of every man, woman, and child on this planet to have access to autonomy and sustainable living uh, for themselves and their family. We are a bunch of people going around the world trying to uh, help make this possible. We, uh, we can do it in any country. It can be done in any country. That's the, that's the point. It, uh, this is available. Uh, spaces like this that are not hooked up to any grids, that produce food, that make comfort for people, that make life for people. Uh, this is available. We have been discovering it for 45 years and are still doing so. Uh, these kinds of things inspire us. These kinds of things cause us to want to do these kinds of things. Um, this is happening all over the world. This is happening all over the world. We don't know what to do with these things. If you came here from another planet, you would think they grew here. They, in fact, do grow here. Uh, ways that we make energy are out of control. Uh, all of our byproducts are just being stacked up everywhere. Uh, glass bottles, plastic bottles. Currently, there's a crisis going on with drinking water. That brown, that brown uh, jug is the water in Flint, Michigan that the government provides for them. But notice the two people standing there under an umbrella because water is falling from the sky. This is, this is what we see. Uh, so we're doing this, um, we're doing this with a, a method that we call biotexture. And uh, it is, it's a profession we had to invent because uh, they wouldn't let me use architecture anymore because I ruined, uh, my, ruined my uh, credentials, let's say. Um, and biotexture is achieving autonomous sustenance through the encounter of Earth phenomena. The, the, the phenomena of the planet are really all we need. They're, they're out there. We can encounter them. They're honest. They're unarguable. The sun, for instance, uh, will kill you. Uh, it'll also save you. Uh, all of the phenomena are like that. They, they don't make promises. They just are the truth. We're trying to encounter them. Uh, there are a lot of them, a lot more than I've got listed here. Um, you know, the moon, the waves, uh, rainbows. There are all kinds of phenomena that we can encounter to have a life. We're trying to make buildings that we call earthships to facilitate this, to do this all over the world in any climate. Uh, I think our ideal creature on this planet that we're continually getting rid of is trees because they, uh, they drop their leaves and make dirt for more trees. They have pipes that collect up water. They put out oxygen and animals put out CO2 and that's an exchange. And they harvest uh, energy from the sun. They are there. They're, they're, they're autonomous. Uh, if I had to model my life, and I guess I am, uh, uh, after something, it, it would be a tree. Half the time I'm, uh, I'm a little embarrassed or ashamed to be a human uh, cutting down trees. So we're looking at how you do this, and we're... We've come up with six real issues that people have to deal with. Uh, they are uh, water, energy, something to do with sewage, garbage, food, and shelter, comfortable shelter that doesn't take fuel. Uh, we have synthesized these into uh, programs that we use uh, in an academy that kind of is an exploration and, and in teaching this. Uh, the... The direction that we're going, uh, 
on this planet is really unarguable at this time. Most people agree that we're headed for a bummer. Um, uh, the path we're on is headed for a bummer. And we're simply saying that um, don't go on that path. You know, <laughs> there's a thousand other ways to go. Uh, and we're seeing that, and it's, uh, it is working. So this is the result of taking another, another direction. Uh, you end up having to live like this. So we, uh, we look at um, these six different categories. Uh, they, the building with recycled materials started decades ago. We use tires as bricks since there are so many of them. And they end up looking like uh, adobe walls. They're very strong. They're used all over the world. They are indigenous to the entire planet. And so why not use them to build with rather than cutting down trees? Uh, bottles are indigenous to the entire planet. We make stained glass walls with them. We've used plastic bottles for the same thing. These are, this is what we call garbage. We invented garbage. Garbage didn't exist before humans came here. Uh, we're trying to make it not exist again. Aluminum cans. And even the washing machine and refrigerator parts can be harvested from the dumps to make roofing. And I even did body work on my Mercedes with it, <laughs> which runs on grease. Bottle caps. I mean, there, is, there are so many things out there that we throw away. In the Philippines, we used cardboard for uh, insulation. Uh, everything we think is garbage is really a natural resource. So this is definitely a, a phenomena on this planet. Uh, the, the idea of heating and cooling structures uh, is done with just gathering energy from the sun. That's, that's what happens. A lot of people don't realize that it is possible to, uh, to make homes that heat and cool themselves that stay comfortable without fuel. And we have diagrams that illustrate that in every climate. They are cooled with tubes that come through the earth. They're wrapped in insulation. There's a whole science to the thermal solar, the thermal mass and the solar gain uh, to both heat and cool houses. The, the temperatures of very low temperatures, very high temperatures are totally stabilized in a building that is built with a lot of thermal mass and insulation. You don't need fuel. That's the point. A lot of people don't realize that. We're trying to illustrate that all over the world. Uh, even in the tropics. Uh, water, water harvesting is uh, not rocket science, but some, for some reason nobody does it. You know, they're, they're having the crisis of water in Flint, Michigan uh, when it's falling from the sky. So water harvesting becomes a part of the building design. The cisterns become uh, the place where it's stored. Pretty, pretty simple. You're just catching water off of the roof and running it into cisterns. Um, my grandmother probably did that. Why don't we do it today? Uh, the building shapes end up relating to that uh, necessity. Um, then when water is used, it becomes sewage and little Sewage treatment is just biology. Uh, it's eighth grade biology. Uh, it makes plants if you treat it right. It doesn't have to be a foul thing that ruins the oceans and coastlines. So the whole, the whole project of uh, treating sewage in your living room like this, uh, growing food, is one of the reasons I have to use the word biotexture instead of architecture because the architects didn't like running sewage through the living room. But this is all sewage treatment. This is all sewage treatment in the home. Using the water that you took a shower in to grow food and flush a toilet. And turning deserts green just from your own sewage. And it's controlled. 
It's not just running rapid. Half of every home is really sewage treatment. Then, after you use the water, you collect the water, you use the water, uh, then you grow food with the water, and you're ending up growing food in the home. Every kind of food you can imagine can be grown in these homes year-round. And you're participating in your own food production then. Uh, since the, the homes make um, a tropical environment, we add a little protein to the situation. So are, Elijah is going to fish. This is in real time. The pond at the Phoenix to illustrate that you can catch a fish out of the pond in your own home and cook it and eat it. And that's what we're going to try to do. So you know, you, you have to kind of let it float up there a little bit like that. Pull it in this way a little. So, that's how quickly you can catch a fish in your own living room and eat it. Of course, we have chickens in their own little beer can nests. Fish, turtles, aquaponics, wildlife. You're living with the planet. You're living, you're living the planet. Uh, we seem to be too removed from the planet these days. And, of course, solar and wind energy, as, as uh, everybody knows about that, we've researched it for years. We build it into the buildings, and they produce solar and wind energy. There we are harvesting a rainbow. So you put all six of these things into a building, and you have... You have a building that is a vessel that takes care of you. And this, this is one of those buildings uh, that is doing all of these things. They don't all have to be this flamboyant, but it is fun. So we take these... these uh, aspects of homes and put them into a very simple home that we're trying to take all over the world and we have and it does all of these things in something a little bit more affordable in in lots of countries lots of states uh, these buildings are being built uh, we're, we're conducting academies this is in uh, uh, midtown Manhattan it's proposed but it looks like it will happen and all the way down to something we call simple survival, which is very, very simple one-room building. And we're finding that a lot of people are interested in that. So we're looking at absolute total autonomy, sustainable living being possible uh, all over the planet. It is actually um, a fun thing to do to go around and try to do this everywhere. It kind of makes... Uh, it makes a circus. We're sort of like a traveling circus at this point uh, in more ways than one. But this is in uh, Andaman Islands after the, after the tsunami, Guatemala, China, Haiti after the earthquake, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Easter Island, a lot of schools because schools kind of embody the whole thinking here, and it, and it makes uh, the students really learning something when they don't even know it. Uh, uh, Philippines after the uh, typhoons. Uh, all of these things are applicable to any climate in any country. Uh, this is Philippines, a hut with no money spent. And in uh, Fiji, we did one in Fiji and Vanuatu, and in Vanuatu, they're doing it themselves. You don't see any of us there. This is them picking up on it and doing it themselves, using these things that grow here on this planet. And one, our next up-and-coming project is uh, in Nepal. Uh, we'll be taking it over there very soon. And uh, 
we're doing the school now in uh, Harigaberry. Uh, and it's amazing how much support there is for this. Uh, Uruguay is a country that's really uh, embracing this whole thing, and we're glad to be here doing it. We'll have the school done in about a week. And the thing is, it's available all over the planet. It can be done. Uh, a thought that I have constantly is uh, if all of the soldiers in all of the armies in all of the world put down their weapons and picked up tools and started building autonomous, sustainable housing for all the people of the world, our problems would be over and real life would just begin. Thank you.